This relic of the ancient past is the right brow horn of a Triceratops, which existed in North America during the late Cretaceous, some 66 million years ago. We begin the preparation by placing the specimen on sand for cushioning. Then an air scribe is used to chisel away the mudstone. Some of the bone is already naturally exposed right here. The scribe is meant to knock away the surrounding matrix and not come in contact with the bone. Underneath the mudstone is a hard iron concretion that wraps around the entire specimen. The objective is to remove the softer mudstone and then chisel away the concretion. Throughout the surrounding matrix we can see carbonized signs of plant life, including this seed. Pear mineralization has preserved the seed's three-dimensional shape. As we chisel away the mudstone, we will shift to the base of the horn. After enough larger portions of matrix are removed, the horn enters the blast chamber where sodium bicarbonate is blasted onto the specimen, abrading the tightly packed matrix. The other side of the horn is chiseled and now Lauren begins to remove the ironstone concretion. So for this section, where the concretion is really thick on the bone, and also the bone's texture is a little more smooth, has a little less ruts and valleys and hills, um, you can actually use a method where you puncture a little hole at an upward angle into the concretion, and you'd make one about here, here, and here. And that upward pressure and vibration will actually vibrate the adhered bone and concretion and it should separate right along that layer without removing any of the bone. This individual Triceratops did not reach maturity, signifying the rampant mortality of the Cretaceous. The magnificent world in which it existed is no longer accessible to our senses. The window to this world lies only in the stone of deep time.